Hi, uh, I'm Janice Koh and um, thanks very much for watching Crazy Rich Asians. I am so sorry I can't be there with you, but I will do my best to answer this very long list of questions that you've given me. Um, so I will do a Q&A with myself. <laughs> um, first of all, what am I busy with currently? Okay, so I can't be there because I'm doing this show called Late Company. Um, by Pangdemonium. It's uh, showing at the Victoria Theatre, which is where I am right now. And please come and watch. Uh, it's a great play, uh, quite moving and, and quite, well, a little bit dark, not quite a comedy. Uh, it's about, it deals with issues of teenage suicide and cyberbullying, and it plays from now until the 10th of March. What has life been like after NUS? Okay, so I graduated in. 96, which feels like eons ago, um, and my, my major at NUS was theatre, which I enjoyed very, very much. Um, how has it helped my acting career? Well, NUS has really prepared me very, very well for what I've ended up doing, not just in terms of acting and theatre, but um, I remember doing my master's at Goldsmiths in um, arts administration and policy immediately after graduation and when I went to London to study I felt very prepared meaning that I was way more prepared than a lot of my peers in my class so in that sense we were we had really great exposure when I was doing my theatre course there of course the the work um, and the, the exposure at NUS gave me a really good grounding in what the industry was like uh, working in the arts and that that kind of awareness in a way developed a very strong interest to do uh, policy work which eventually led me down the path of being a nominated member of parliament uh, for the arts uh, from 2012 to 2014 so I have to I have to really acknowledge my time at NUS for developing that, that aspect of uh, industry knowledge Next question, how did you embark on your journey into the entertainment industry? Wow, how much time do you guys have? <laughs> I would say that uh, I started studying theatre when I was 16 at Victoria Junior College and I just fell head over heels in love with acting and performance and in a way it was life changing to do the theatre studies and drama course as an A-level subject. In a way that was the start and, and the rest is history. I think I was very lucky to find a subject that I enjoyed tremendously and I felt really passionately about and after that there was no need to really think about what my next job would be or what, what I wanted to do because I knew that this was what I wanted to do in all shapes and forms including uh, working at the Arts Council for a number of years um, and even though it was uh, not on stage it was supporting the work that was going on in the arts and that was still my first love. So actually even working in government, I felt deeply connected to what I was interested in doing. All right, Crazy Rich Asians. What role did I play and how did I land this role and how did I prepare for it? Um, so as with everybody else, you know, I went through auditions and um, auditioned for all kinds of characters, including Peg Lin, who was eventually played by Aquafina. I mean, can you imagine? I couldn't, I couldn't have done it as even half as good as she did, but um, ended up with the role of Felicity, which I love. Uh, I almost didn't get the part because, and this is a story I heard from the director, John Chu, uh, many months later after we wrapped. At the time that they started shooting Crazy Rich Asians in KL, I was actually involved in Hand to God, a play by SRT, and I couldn't make filming dates for one of the scenes. So at that time, you know, we thought that uh, they, they, they didn't know if, if I could make it into the movie, but uh, Nina Jacobson, the producer, and John liked me enough to take me out of that scene so that they could keep me for the rest of the movie. So I am so fortunate and so lucky and really privileged to have had uh, a part in this movie because honestly, it could have gone to anybody else. Um, how did I prepare for it? You know. <laughs> The hardest part about Felicity was that a lot of my lines were in Cantonese and this leads on to the next question which is what are my proudest moments in the film? Wow, I'm so proud of my Cantonese! 
And I know if you're Cantonese, you probably go, oh, she didn't quite make it. But you know, I was, I I only had like, I had seven nights in Cantonese, and I rehearsed the hell out of it. I in my in the shower, in the car, taking my kids to school. I scolded my kids in Cantonese, the same lines every day, so that by the time we went on set, it felt natural and that it could roll out of my mouth. Um, I, I I begged friends to translate because the script was in English, right? And I begged them to translate it for me in advance because even though I was given a dialect coach, that help only came very very late. So and I knew that I needed a lot more time to prepare. So, yay! Proudest moment in the film, and it opens the movie. My Cantonese lines open the movie. Yay! So I mean, it's, so, it's such a small thing, but you know, I was very happy. The other proud moment I have in the film really is seeing Singapore. Oh my god, you know, the minute Singapore comes on screen, when I saw it in LA at the premiere at the um, Chinese theatre, I, I, I swear I cried because I was so proud of our city and how beautiful we looked on screen. You'll see it later. So what are the challenges I faced during filming? Whew, none really. <laughs> Apart from many late nights where we had to shoot overnight, uh, especially um, the house parties and the the garden parties that you'll see in the movie later. Those were all done overnight shoots and we had three to four of them. So um, we kept ourselves busy and awake by playing, uh, you know, blackjack, Selena will know. We would bring lots of snacks, you know, sneak in a, cu a couple of glasses of wine and then play blackjack to keep ourselves awake. Um, but other than that, you know, it's been, it was, it was really fun and we had such a good time. Now to end, what advice can I give to alumni or existing students who want to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? I would say, um, if you're really hungry, I, I say you just have to go and do it. Um, grab any opportunity that you can. There's no real bad opportunity unless you're being exploited. And by, by that I mean, uh, sometimes in the beginning, you may not be getting the kind of fees that you're hoping to get. but in a way, experience builds on experience and eventually the word of mouth will get around if you're any good. And it's such a small industry that it doesn't take very long, so you have to a little be, be a little patient in the beginning. But if you are a hard worker and you've got a good work ethic, almost anybody can make it in the entertainment industry. When it comes to talent, well I can't say very much about that. To some degree you can say there's a certain X factor, but whether or not you're you know, behind the camera or on the set or on stage, backstage, as long as you have a, you know, you love the job and you just want to do well, I think the attitude and the spirit is far more important. It'll get you far. Um, and I think that's it. I've come to the end. So, wow, not bad, Janice. I'm back. Quite a good interviewer. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy the movie as much as I did. Enjoy.